Welcome back to Freight Waves. Now on this Thursday morning, joining us now is Bryce Monjon from OIDA. Bryce, thank you for being here today. And we've got a continued conversation about truck parking and some truck parking legislation going on. What can you tell us about this latest round of really discussion about truck parking? Yeah, so the most recent update that we have on uh, truck parking is the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee back at the end of July finally advanced H.R. 2187. That's the Truck Parking Safety Improvement Act. That's the bill uh, that we've been working on for years now. It was introduced last Congress, reintroduced this Congress, um, and they made a few changes uh, to that legislation. Uh, that, that was kind of necessary because with the highway bill and the infrastructure bill being passed, they needed to make a few tweaks to make it work. Uh, but we're very excited that we finally have uh, a bill moving forward in the House. So where we're at now is we're hoping to try uh, and get this across the finish line in the House, and then the next step is over in the Senate. Uh, you know, a bill needs to pass the House and Senate before it can be signed into law, so we're having conversations uh, in both uh, the House and the Senate with uh, people who have been supportive on this issue. So, uh, you know, we still have a lot of work to do, uh, a lot of work, especially because there's not a ton of time left on the legislative calendar before the midterm elections. Um, but, you know, still we're making progress uh, right now. Well, that was uh, a good explanation, Bryce, and confusing as well at times as which way it goes to this house or that house. It took me back to my yeah. schoolhouse rock days when I was just... Uh, yeah, old, you know, right? I know. Yeah, if only it were that, <laughs> even if it were only that simple. Yeah, exactly. Just sit on a step, sing a tune, it'll be done in just a few minutes. But so yeah. what, is, what is actually in this, in, in this bill? Okay, we're excited to get this thing moving and coming out there. What, what is going to be the results or hopefully the results that come out when this thing passes? Yeah, so the bill is it basically provides money for the expansion of truck parking capacity. It would provide for $755 million over a four year period, and the funding would be awarded through a competitive grant program where uh, you know, state governments, local governments, uh, other entities, other public entities, or even public-private partnerships could apply for this money. Uh, and again, the bottom line is this money would be used to create more parking spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could mean, uh, you know, laying more pavement for new spaces, reconfiguring an existing rest area to uh, allow for more room for trucks. Uh, it could also mean opening a, a way station uh, for truck parking. Um, so it, it's creating more spaces. It's also important to note that the legislation uh, prohibits any uh, fees from being charged to use spaces built out uh, through the program. So there couldn't be any fees to, to park any of the, any of these new spaces that were located. Um, but uh, again, the, really the idea with this bill is to prioritize truck parking. Uh, we know that there's a, a truck parking shortage. The USDOT mm -hmm. has said it, state governments have said it, uh, mm -hmm. but it just always kind of falls to the bottom of the list. So by setting mm -hmm. this pot of money aside and creating this program, I think uh, you know, there will definitely be interest. Absolutely. It brings a little bit more front of mind for folks. And so that's good news to hear yeah. about on that front. And Bryce, thank you for bringing us that update on parking. I want to change gears yeah. a little bit to continue our conversation that we just had yesterday um, about autonomous vehicles. Of course, yesterday was our Autonomous and Electric Vehicle Summit here at Freight Waves. And we're interested to kind of hear some of your guys' thoughts on some of those segments, specifically our last one talking about transparency in the industry. And kind of the general consensus, I think, is that obviously transparency in autonomous technology is paramount to safety. Mm -hmm. Where does OIDA stand with those thoughts as well? Yeah, I mean, we are in, uh, we, <laughs> I think that's number one for us is we know, uh, we believe that there needs to be transparency for these autonomous and automated technologies that are being developed. It's, it's so difficult to even answer questions or know where to start without having uh, the research and the data uh, available. Um, you know, I think looking at it more specifically, we saw last year NHTSA, you know, put out the requirement that uh, companies developing these technologies report crashes after they happen. While that's a step in the right direction, it's far from uh, sufficient to really meet what's necessary in order to have any sort of confidence uh, in these technologies. Uh, I think, again, to even highlight a more specific example, uh, you know, there was that report out uh, about um, 
you know, I'm not trying to pick on anyone too specifically, but I think it provides a good example that the too simple accident uh, where, you know, there was video that came out of the accident. And when you looked back at what was reported on that, it doesn't, you know, if you saw that the information that was reported, it really doesn't line up with, uh, you know, with what you see in that video. And, and more than that, uh, I, I think as I understood their explanation, it's almost as if they didn't think that that crash should have even needed to been reported uh, because of the way it happened. So when you when you see those when you see that kind of stuff happen, it, it it doesn't help alleviate any of our concerns. In fact, it kind of reinforces what we've been saying is there needs to be more proactive reporting and more data that's uh, that's put out there. Yeah, Absolutely. So, oh, sorry. No, please. Sorry, Michael. I was going to say, we have a statement from Jay Grimes, who is the Director of Federal Affairs for you guys yeah. at OIDA. And he said that we agree with NHTSA's acknowledgement that Level 2 advanced driver assistance systems are not designed to and are not able to perform critical operating components of the driving task. We also support mm -hmm. NHTSA's goal of gathering more data on all autonomous vehicles, but crashes will continue without more transparency from AV manufacturers. So my question yep. for you, Bryce, is we see, of course, you know, too simple being the example of the crash happened yep. and after the fact now putting it forward and announcing it. But then on the other side of things, we see companies like Locomation saying, hey, we had the NTSB here last week. Let's talk about it. Let's well, we want to show them what sure. we've got and show them our capabilities. It's kind of two sides of the spectrum in transparency. But do you guys think that we need to lean all the way to locomation side, even to the point where they're advertising, inviting in these government agencies to really kind of prove their worth? Yeah, you know, I'm, to be honest, I'm not familiar exactly with what they're doing, but I think kind of looking at, uh, you know, Jay's statement, I think what we'd like to see is more context and more data. Um, and that's even what NHTSA said when they released their report is uh, it's hard to put this into context because you, even with this, you have the number of crashes, but you don't know how many trucks or how many cars are on the road, how many miles are they being driven? You know, one company may be operating under uh, these types of conditions while another may be operating in a completely different type of conditions. You know, they may be specifying what level of automation, you know, two through five or whatever, but you don't know what type of, you know, weather, terrain, things like that. So I think at a, at a very minimum starting point, we just need to have more data that would uh, provide that sort of context. I think certainly if you have a company that's, uh, you know, trying to to demonstrate how their, uh, you know, how their technology works and how their their vehicles work, that can be helpful. But it, again, without knowing the specifics of that situation, it's just difficult to put it into context without knowing what the whole universe is. I think that's that's kind of the other thing when, when you when drivers think about autonomous technology or they hear about these things, you know, they know the number of miles that they drive in a year and they know how many miles that is, uh, you know, extrapolated across the entire industry. So when you hear, uh, you know, claims about how many miles are being driven, it's still hard to, again, put it in the context of what does that mean or how safe is it relative to the drivers that are out on the road right now. Yeah, so Bryce, I, I don't disagree with anything that you just that you just said. I think if you're putting autonomous vehicles out there, we need to know that they're that they're safe. And we need to know how they were tested, and they, we can't have self certification, as it were. Sure. Right? Uh, there's got to sure. be some some other entity, and I, so I agree with what you guys are with what you guys are saying. How do you get that message out, or how do you fight that notion that hey, it's OIDA? Of course, they don't like autonomous vehicles. They're just going to throw mud at it and try and stop it. Obviously, you guys are bright enough to know you're not going to stop autonomous vehicles. Uh, you just want them to be safe. How do you get that out there to the people and make sure that that is the sentiment and they listen to your very valid concerns and don't throw mud on it from the point that, hey, they just don't want it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, <laughs> you're right. That, that That's definitely a, a perception that we have to be aware of. And I think it is trying to ask, you know, very basic questions when these ideas are being proposed. Uh, the thing, you know, as you're asking, that kind of pops into my mind. Um, it was back, I was looking at this yesterday, I think 2019, yeah. where FMCSA was kind of asking, what changes do we need to possibly make to the, um, you know, safety regulations in order to accommodate uh, autonomous vehicles or autonomous technologies? And in that conversation, I think we're on really good footing to say, how can you even begin to contemplate these questions when we don't even know what is one company going to do, let alone all these other companies going yeah. to do? I think when you start to ask kind of those specific questions, um, you know, like how does this even work? Um, I think, you know, we haven't had any satisfactory answers for those kind of basic questions. So I think kind of yeah. starting at the base level uh, is a good place for us to start. Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you so much.
right, Bryce, thank yeah. you for being here with us today. Again, as always, yes, we you. love catching up with you guys from Oida. We'll talk to you again soon. Right now, we're going to head back over to the wall for our next carrier update.